when you walk in, you sort of think, you know, I'm going to be an engineer, I'm going to be either in the design office or out on site, actually building things, putting them in the ground. Then there's all the other options that you sort of learn about as you go along. I've got friends going into finance, um, marketing, accountancy, all different sorts of industries, so it is very transferable. As well as all the technical content, they sort of teach you how to think like an engineer, which is what employers are after. You know, someone that can think on their feet, make quick decisions. You know, that's, that's the employability factor. It's quite hands-on based. You get to go into the, the heavy structures laboratories and mix concrete. You know, it's good to see it, you know, these materials being built from the ground up. There's pretty much three different aspects of civil engineering. You've got the structural, the hydraulic sort of water side of things, and the geotechnical, including sort of soils and that. And we have labs based around sort of all three of those aspects. So it gets you a really good broad range in your first year. My placement year, it was very good. It was for a, a local civil engineering company, McLaughlin & Harvey. I worked on a, a local Northern Ireland project, the Gobbins Path Reconstruction. It's in Isla McGee which involves the installation of 21 new stainless steel bridges at the bottom of a 70 metre cliff. To get to the job I had to train as a ropes access engineer, so I actually physically abseiled the cliff every day to get to work. Going to Queen's you see some of the, the engineers that have studied here in the past, Peter Rice for example, and did a lot of work on the Sydney Opera House amongst various other projects. With civil engineering you can go anywhere across the world, you could be underground mining in Australia, um, to the coal fields in sort of northern Canada. They're looking good mines in any industry, so it really is limitless in that respect. 